Sundstrom Field on the Coon Rapids High School campus. Coon Rapids Cardinals playing today against the Centennial Cougars. Jeremy Smith in for Joe Young with Howie Shapiro. How you doing, Howie? I'm well, Jeremy, thank you very much. You have some big sandals to fill. I do. Yeah, I do. so Joe is actually uh, here. We are. Beautiful day at Ken Sundstrom Field, by the way. Just, just gorgeous. 58 degrees, 12 like mile it. an hour wind coming in, uh, blowing toward first base from left field. So we'll see if that comes into play on fly balls here as we see the first pitch lined out to left. One up, one down. Yeah, the it's going to be a little, it's a little windy here this afternoon. The wind's kind of blowing from at times right to left and then at times straight in. So you saw that ball kind of tail off. On that, uh, on that opening hit, hit by Vinny Rye. We'll take a look at that defense out there in the field. Left to right in the outfield, Powell McCullough Dennell. On the infield from third around to first, it's Dutton Manders. Rots in and right. As that one's grounded back to the mound. Zach White behind the plate and out there on the mound making that play, Nick Bradley. Cardinals coming off a really tough loss last night. Over at Wintercrest, they played a night game against Blaine, and they lost 7-6. to six. Uh, The Bengals scoring seven runs in the top of the second. The Cardinals answering in the bottom of the third with six, and then neither, run, neither team could score a run. Cardinals had their chances in the bottom of the fifth and the bottom of the seventh, but unfortunately could not at least tie it up to send it into extra innings. Well, as we see stepping in the batter's box here, box here is Jake... Slipka for the Cougars. Slipka stepping to the plate, hitting 458. Now this team bats 341 as a squad. Swings at that first pitch back toward the mound. Bradley manages to pick it up, toss it over, three up, three down. Quick top half of the first for the Cardinals. We will step away for a quick break. And we'll be back with more baseball here on CTM. Did I ruin your picture? <laughs> sorry about, sorry about that, because I saw your paper starting to fly. Apparently, they're calling that last one a foul ball, even though it stayed in play. There's a second one followed back to the screen, so we had two strikes on Slipka. Excuse my impromptu conversation. I thought we were off the air. <laughs> it's a good thing I said something right. that uh, was okay for the, uh, oh, the the masses. You always say things that are okay for the masses. Yeah, yeah. It's I good. wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> that one in the dirt. Well, Nick Bradley's uh, really for the for the Cardinals been their best pitcher this season. He's a, he's uh, stepping on the mound with a 2.07 earned run average, a two and two record and 20 strikeouts in 20 in the third innings. That one is grounded to short. Manders picks it up, tosses over, throws a little bit high, and right came off the bag. So what we initially thought was a ground out is actually a single. Okay. Centennial's got their first base runner of the day. We'll see if they score that one as an error. Looked like he bobbled that pitch a little bit and it forced him to, to throw the ball, get rid of it quicker than he really wanted to because he, he had to. Runner going to second base, that throw is there and high. So Slipka moves over to second on the stolen base. Brady Ivory as he steps to the plate, hitting 292. Runner in scoring position there. Swinging strike to Ivory there. That was an error. To the count. They did give uh, an error to Manders on that play. And one of the things Co Ma Coach Mossy says that we have to do a really good job playing defense and that we can't afford to boot balls in the field. Checked swing there. Doesn't go. One and two. A slip cut out there on second, taking a healthy lead. Top of the first. You can't think the Cardinals are going to do 
too much to keep him on. No, I think they'll just be concerned about that hitter at the plate and just trying to get out of this inning without any damage. One, two, the count on Ivory. That one's a little high, two and two. Ivory leading the team and runs batted in he, with 11. So a good situation for him to be up here with a runner in scoring position now, a three and two count, Jeremy. After being up 0-2, back to a full count. Good patience by Ivory there in the box. Now let's see if Nick challenges him at three and two. Certainly doesn't want to give him something he can drive, but he also does not want to put him on a free pass. And that one is hit to right field, curving there in the wind. And that is going to get over the head of Denel, Dunnell, sorry. That is going to be a stand-up double for Ivory with an RBI. Well, gave him a pitch he could drive. <laughs> he did give that ball a ride, Jeremy, and and that uh, was a nice, uh, nice piece of hitting to get that RBI. Now 12 on the season for Brady Ivory. And with Ivory out on second plate, second base, that brings Will Whelan pitcher for the Cougars. Now Whelan hitting 429 on the season. He's got six runs batted in, looking to see if he can uh, bring Ivory across. Whelan tips that one off, back to the screen for the first strike. Wind's picking up here, I gotta tape my hat down before it blows away. You don't wanna lose the hat. Well, when you lose the hair, the hat's yeah, important. The hat's, it's very important. It's got to protect that. I'm not a redhead, but if I stay in the sun too long, I will be. Oh, one the count. Bradley catches the outside with that one. Gets ahead. Oh, two. Ivory on second. Wheeling in the box, looking at that 0-2 count. Steps out. Bradley resets, gets ready to look for the call here. I hit him. Ah. And he is advancing over to first base. Well, and that's a tough one. When you're heading the count 0-2 and, and then you hit the batter and put him on here with two away. And all of a sudden, keeps this uh, inning alive as Coach Mossy is going to take a walk. And I, I think we'll talk, have uh, a word with the official. We don't have anyone on the field mic'd up today, so not quite able to make that one out. Looks like uh, Chase Granzow, number 15 for the Cougars, going to going to uh, be a courtesy runner for the pitcher. And our batter is Drew Molitor, the first base minder. The runner's at one and two with two down here in the top of the first. Well, he's hitting 476. First pitch is fouled back for a strike. Numbers are inflated a little bit, Jeremy. This, uh, this team played Osseo earlier in the season, beat him 28 to nothing. Yeah, and so in five innings, obviously, and so this was a, a team that got a lot of hits, and it inflates that, that average, but they've been keeping it going. Second pitch is low for a ball. Great job by White keeping that one in front of him with two runners out there on base. Both teams looking to get their record back to 500 today. Yep. Molitor watches that one go by for strike number two. So that's not necessarily a bad thing for the batters. All the damage has come on two strikes yes, it, so it, far. Yes, it has. It definitely has. But boy, if, uh, if Bradley can retire him here, be a great situation. Just the one run coming across, but runners at first and second and two away. One, two pitch is hit high into left field. Powell overranging underneath, makes the catch and it gets the Cardinals out of the inning. One run does come across for the Cougars, though. Coon Rapids has a chance to step up to the plate when we come back with more baseball for real this time on CTN. <laughs>
back in the lovely spring weather for outdoor baseball at Coon Rapids. We're, we're working on our tans. Absolutely. Well, from the elbow down for me. Yeah. Got to get that farmer's tan. Well, in the, in the face and the top of the head. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's back where of it gets the neck. dangerous. Back yeah. of the neck. Got to put on those Cardinals colors. Yep. Yeah. Well, speaking of baseball and Cardinals, we'll take a look at who the Cardinals have coming to the plate here. In this inning, batting first, right fielder Tyler Dunnell. Mark Mander, shortstop, batting two. Zach White, the catcher. And in the cleanup spot, Jaden Cup. Batting fifth, Patrick Wright, first baseman. Tommy Dutton in the six hole. Garrett Rotzine, batting seventh. Colin McCullough, batting eighth. And left fielder Jacob Powell, rounding out that batting order for the Cardinals. And today they will be facing off against Will Whelan. Whelan one and one with a 2.03 earned run average. And, and Donnell as he steps to the plate, and they like, like him in that leadoff position. He's batting buck 92 to start this game off. Centennial drawing first blood here with what we thought was uh, ending, inning ending ground ball out, or but it was turned out it was foul. Danell, a bats left-handed, stepping into the box here. First pitch from Den from I'm sorry, from Whelan is yep. high to Danell. Ball one on the first pitch. And that wind really is dying all the way down to where the flag's not even blowing, and then it'll pick right back up again. So we'll see if that comes into play later. Second pitch right down the pipe for strike one. Yeah, it's uh, now it's, now it's, it's blowing straight into from center field to home plate. But I, get, I know they'd like to have that wind calm down a little bit. Nice pitch there, nice fastball, a lot of velocity. Swinging strike. Wheeling gets ahead in the count. One, two. And he's gonna get the strike out there. Fastball at the letters there. Shortstop Mark Manders stepping up to bat now. Batting from that right side. Manders hitting 321 at the plate. First pitch strike from Wheeler. That second one a little too far inside. Even the count at one and one. Well, Cardinals, Cardinals had won three in a row before last night's loss to Blaine. They've been playing well as of late. That one is fouled off over the CTN Mobile there in uh, the right field line near first base. One and two the count. Swinging strike three. And that is two down, both on strikeouts for Will Whelan today. Catcher Zach White stepping up. White hitting 118 on the season. All the Cougars action came with two outs in the last yeah. inning, so. It's so not is that what you're saying? So it's gonna be a two out rally here in the, in the bottom, or two out opportunity here in the bottom of the first? Every, every time there's a batter, it's an opportunity. But it's not always a two-out opportunity. Not always. Yeah. Only when there's two outs. Exactly. God, you know that's why that's why we love you here. Yes. It's like having two John Maddens. On it, the it is. It, yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if you could make a turducken, we'd be in great shape. Well, I can guarantee that I can uh, 
I can punt up the broadcast more <laughs> than anybody wants me to. Well, the problem is so could I, so I think we're in trouble. Definitely. No question. No question, Howie. <laughs> Well, Whelan definitely getting ahead of every count so far, pitching strikes, trying to stay in front of the batters. That one is high. Are you saying that Whelan is dealing? He is dealing so far, one and one. Early on. Checked swing there. Umpire looks down to first base. He did not go around, so that'll be ball number two. Two and one the count. White takes a cut at that one. That was strike three. We're really on top of it here in the first, Howie. We'll catch up, though. I'll get the rest of our ducks back in a row. Hang on for more baseball, second inning, now that we're settled in, back here on CTN. ways to stay healthy all year long. Second inning with the Cougars up. One nothing on the Cardinals. Jeremy Smith, Howie Shapiro, watching some more baseball. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a it's a nice day. It's a pretty day. Blue sky, sun's out. It's a it's a little bit chilly with the wind blowing in. So the the sun hangs out just over the uh, the left field side here, so doesn't come into play too much for the batter or the pitcher. But the uh, the right side of the infield and the outfield have to deal with the sun in their eyes. So well, you must be chilly wearing that tank top. Well, it's a, it's a commitment to getting an even tan. I don't what? want those uh, those lines. So. <laughs> It's, um, it's nice that you uh, wear the CTN, the new CTN tank top. Yes. Yeah. First pitch here nice from break. Bradley. Catches a strike here. Nice break on that pitch. Peyton Street, shortstop, leading off the inning for the Cougars. That one just misses to make it one and one. Street hitting 278 as he steps to the plate. Bradley trying to catch that corner again, but just misses it. Two and one the count. Yeah, he's trying to work that outside portion of the plate, but as you mentioned, just missing. This one gets grounded to third. Ranging over to his left, left is Manders, not able to hang on to that one. And that is a single for a street. Second hit of the game for Centennial. I think even if he had fielded that, it would have been a tough throw. I mean, he had to backhand that ground ball, and it kind of slowed a bit, but I think he realized if he if he uh, got that in his glove, he was going to have to get a lot of zip on that ball, and he may not have been able to throw him out regardless. And even then, that's a chance for an error and a uh, quick walk to second base on a bad throw. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they haven't. No, they put that as a hit. I, did, I figured it was a hit. But. Did score that as a hit, correct? Yep. Aaron Skrypek, right fielder for the Cougars, in the box right now. Takes a first pitch, swing and strike. 
hitting 375 on the season. That's not too shabby for a number eight batter. No. But, you know, as I mentioned, they're hitting 341 as a squad, which is uh, very respectable, very nice average as a team. So one and one the count. Nobody down, runner on first. Scrapek gets a tip of that one, but it gets back to the glove for strike two. Nobody down here in the top of the second. Get a throw over to first. Little dangerous there, kind yeah. of a low throw. There is a lot of uh, a lot of territory between first base and the fence behind it. You know, Wright did a good job to make sure he got into his glove. Oh, that pitch didn't miss by much. That pitch oh, called a ball. So two and two. I think the, uh, the, the Cardinal dugout thought differently, but all that matters is what the man or woman in blue call. Official with the face cage is the one who makes the call. This one is launched into right field over Donnell's head. Runner is held up at third. And that's going to be a stand up double for Scrapek. Another two strike hit for well, the Cougars. Donnell took a couple of steps in and realized what well, this ball was uh, was going over his head. And then I think he kind of lost it in the sun a little bit, although it, was, uh, it fell quite a ways behind him. But I don't think he was able to really track where the ball was in the air. Well, misjudge on that one. And that puts runners at two and three with nobody down. Number nine batter Anders Westman takes a strike one pitch. Bradley trying to get ahead here. West, uh, Anders hitting a mere 600. Hasn't had the amount of a bats as uh, some of the rest of his teammates, but. This one's grounded to second. Rotson throws it over to first. They get one out, but that is an RBI as another run comes across. Rotson realized, you know, the only out was to first base, and he, and he wanted to make sure that he got it. But that, as you mentioned, that does now double the lead for the Cougars, 2-0. And Scrapek moves over to third. We're back at the top of the order. Rye takes a strike on that first pitch. Rye flew out to left, his last at bat. We're gonna go for the play at home. And they're calling him safe. The tag was late. Well, the, the throw the throw was a little to the outside. Had that throw been more at the inside portion of the plate, they would have had him, unfortunately. Uh, Zach White had to stretch to his right. As you're going to see here. I mean, there's, I think it was the right play because they had plenty of time to get him. But um, Throw just a little bit too far to the see, side. Yeah, it's just had that ball been to the other, other side of the plate, they would have had him. His foot hit the plate before the glove was able to make that tag. And that makes it a 3-0 game. One down here in the second. Rye on first base. Hemmer standing in the batter's box. Swings through that pitch for strike one. Hammer grounded out back to the pitcher's mound. Last inning. Nice pitch in there for strike two. And Centennial's batters have been patient. They haven't panicked with two strikes. Even yeah. down 0-2, we've seen them battle back to full counts and get hits in this situation. Well, they've been patient at the plate and they've been uh, it's been paying off for them. Bradley's pitch is high. Just a little. For ball one. Bradley 
his throw. Inside. <laughs> Emory didn't think so. That's a big second that out. Is a huge second out for the Cardinals. And that is first pitch out, or I'm sorry, strikeout for Bradley today. Nice to get that first one under yep. your belt. Well, in, a, in a good spot because now you're again down three nothing with a runner at first. You just want to get out of this inning, and get your your guys back to the plate. Well, Slipka reached on an error back there in the first and did come around to score after stealing second. Another first pitch strike. Bradley's been pretty pretty consistent with that. Bradley gets the sign, sets to deliver. Sklipko watches that one go by to even the count at one and one. Two outs here, Cardinals looking to get out of this inning. Two runs across for the Cougars. Big lead off first base there. For Rye, he dances back as Bradley checks him over there to keep him honest. Well, you know, you got to get the uniform dirty. Otherwise, he didn't play, yep, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the whole reason nope. of wearing white pants. But nobody will know if you play if the, exactly. the uniform's not dirty. I won't confirm or deny <laughs> that games where I stayed on the bench, I rubbed dirt on my pants so it looked like I played. I know you did. Well, the problem was it was volleyball. It wasn't even baseball. That was golf. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not a golf. If it's no. mini golf, I'm in. If it's regular golf, I'll I'm, drive your I'm cart out. for you, but <laughs> I'd rather take a nap. I'm, I'm the same way as you. Runners going, and White not able to handle the pitch. So Rye steals his way over to second after that RBI single here. So two and two the count. With two down here in the second. That 2-2 two -two pitch is low. That's going to be a full count now. So Slipka and Bradley... One pitch to determine the end of the inning, Howie. How's it going to go? Well, the Cardinals are hoping it's going to go their favor. They are. And if it's a Cougar. foul ball, it's not one pitch. Exactly. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, you do You do for at least this pitch. <laughs> one pitch at a time. <laughs> Trying to build some drama here motto. in the top of the second. Yeah. That one is fouled off. There goes your theory. Down the right side. Well, I did correct myself. I, I know you did. It could be a foul. It so could be. And then it was. Half so, credit. So you you're, you're, yeah, you see the future. Well. Can you tell me what the winning lottery numbers are going to be for, for I tonight? I can tell you the numbers, but I can't tell you which state. <laughs> <laughs> or order. Or well, if they're actually going to be the winners. Yes. I can just give you some random There's numbers. There's going to be a two in there somewhere. <laughs> and that is going to be a ball four to Slipka. Makes his way over to first. And brings up Ivory. Ivory with an RBI double in the first inning. He was able to put that first run on for Centennial. And he's got two base runners now as he steps up. Bradley looking to get out of this inning any way he can. That's grounded toward first. Scooped, bobbled, then kicked. Throws going home. And it looks like Rye is caught in a rundown here. He makes his way back safely. And that throws a little bit high. And Dutton really had to go up for it before he could come down and apply the tag. And by that time, the runner's safe back at the bag. We'll see if that is also scored an error. And it is indeed. Yep. So, so that's going to be an ROE for Ivory. Base is loaded, two down. Whelan at the mound. Hit by a pitch last time he was here. Takes strike one. Yeah, Nick Bradley just, just wants to get out of this inning. Yeah, he just wants to get back to that, that dugout. 
It's in the shade, there's somewhere to sit. Lot, lots of reasons. That one is skied out to center field. McCullough gauging, grabs it, and gets the Cardinals out of the inning before more damage is done. But Centennial is able to bring two more across, extend their lead to three nothing. As the Cardinals get a chance to step back into the batter's box with more baseball on CTM. Owen, when you came into my life, it was a whirlwind. I just can't do it. We didn't know what the future would hold, but we knew you would always be a part of it. Adopting you was the best decision in our life. And I am so proud to call you my son. Did you know you can raise backyard chickens? But a permit is required, and there's a limit of four female chickens per property. No roosters or other fowl are allowed. And there are specific rules for the chicken coop and run. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to coonrabbitsmn.gov. Back with more prep baseball on CTN. Bottom of the second inning, Coon Rapids. Goose egg in the, the runs column, down by three to Centennial. And it could have been worse as well. Got out of a bases loaded jam there in the top half of the inning. Last inning, Cardinals went down on three strikeouts. This inning leading off for them will be the designated hitter, Jaden Kopp. Yeah, Kopp's, uh, Kopp's having a nice season at the plate, hitting 333. Batters getting their timing ready to go as the umpire signals it is time to get back into that game. Still a moderately brisk win. Yeah. Coming in, blown straight in right now from center field toward the home dish. You should have gone back to your car to get your coat. Eh. If anyone has a shawl, maybe they could uh, borrow you. I'm, I'm fine with this uh, the CTN muscle shirt. Because you're a man. Yeah. Well, no, it's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I mean, those two, those two circles overlap a lot, but. Uh, you could be a manly idiot. First pitch is a strike. Good pitch there. Oh, he's uh, he's definitely, he's got that fastball working and, and Cardinals are having trouble getting the bat on the ball. 0-2 the count here. That one has popped up to the right, curling a little bit to right field. That's gonna drop into the glove of Scrypick for out number one. I'm uh, I'm learning my like real baseball annotation right now. Before I would just write like fly out, but I'm I'm that's an F9. I'm proud of you. I'm learning how to do it. Well, I'm trying to fill Joe's shoes, and I know he's a master statistician. So, young officially, he keeps the best stats. He's, he's a master at everything. Everything he does. He'll be the first to tell you that. <laughs> 182 at the plate for Patrick Wright as he Patrick steps in. Wright. Yeah. Another strike there, so 0-2. The count with one down. That one is inside for a ball. That's close to where this umpire has called strikes before, so we always have to wait to, to find out what it is officially. <laughs> one and two the he's, count now. He's keeping you in suspense. He's making sure I'm paying attention. That one's followed back behind the screen. That's gonna go 
real close to the bleachers, but everybody's safe. So one and two the count, one down. Whelan's pitch is low. Wright takes a swing at it, and he's thrown out at first. Officially, that still goes down as a strikeout. Correct. Correct with a K, because it's a strikeout. Yes, exactly. Get another look at that here. The ball rolled to a nice place where it was a real easy throw. So Tommy Dutton steps in, batting on the right side of the plate, batter number six for the Cardinals. That is hitting 200 as he steps to the plate. Holds up and gets ball one on that first pitch. Another nice pitch from Whelan. Gets him swinging for strike number one. He yeah, count. Whelan's having a, uh, a really nice outing so far here. Obviously, it's it's been early. It's just uh, he's one out, one out away through two, but he's controlled from the from the start. That yeah, one's followed back. Makes count one and two. Misses inside a little low. It's a nice job just making sure he doesn't offer at it. When you're head uh, one, two in the count, you can dance around the edges yes. a little bit. Yes, you see can. See if your uh, batters will bite on it. That one's followed back to the screen. A little bit more of a solid foul than the first one, so. As far as foul balls go. As far as foul balls go. Foul ball. Easy for you to say. As foul balls go. Red leather, yellow leather. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> Dutton takes a cut at that one, but the pitch gets through. That gives Whelan five strikeouts through two innings. Centennial still with that 3 0 lead. We'll go to the third on CTM. I used to drive an ambulance as an EMT, and I've always tried to be a safe driver. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. In my car, if I see a truck or bus taking a turn, I know to take my time. When big vehicles turn right, they may swing wide to make the turn. If you try to sneak in, well, it's a lesson you'd rather not learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's our roads, it's our safety. I'm a first generation Filipino American. You don't always feel you're a part of the country you live in. It's this weird middle space sometimes that you have to, to live inside of. But when you meet others that are also living in that space, you'll learn to know that that is its own unique space too. Got some people enjoying the sunny day there yeah, in the why grass. Not? We wait, we wait all year for the, well, I don't say all year. We wait most, of, seems like all year. Well, we got the two two seasons in Minnesota, winter and road construction, yep. so. We're, in, we're starting road construction. We are, there's a couple nice days in for us. The wind has now shifted and is blowing from right to left in the field. That's just crazy. Molitor in the batter's box for Centennial. Hits it down the right field line and that is going to curve well, foul for strike number two. So the bad news for the Cardinals, they're down 
the good news, Centennials left five base runners on. <laughs> well, yeah, so no. So this could it, be much worse. That one's hit down the left field line and just misses. No, that's a fair ball. It touched the green on the on the right side of the the fair side of the line. I gotta I gotta get a better view of this monitor here. That was a nice piece of hitting as he went, went the other way. Just nice job of lacing it down the left field line. So that is a double for Molitor. There we go. We'll see that replay. Thanks to our fantastic crew. Cracker Jack crew. You know, we got we have Dave Emmy here, which is really a, a, a treat when uh, we get a man of his caliber Absolutely. caliber to do camera for us. We have to pay him more. Pro quality camera ops demand pro quality. That's money. right. He gets his usual money and he gets a happy meal as well. So they did indeed call that a foul. I was right. Oh, they did? Oh, they did actually. They looked to me. It looked like it hit the other side of the line. Ooh! The right Bradley knocks that one down after it bounces right back to the mound, gets the out there. Oh, he'll take that. Well, I feel like that balances out that first inning when I didn't know it was a foul ball. So <laughs> we both didn't. So I'm I'm over two. I have one, I have one more shot, shot, and if I fail, I have to leave. A little bit, a little bit of rust here. That's two strikes. So we're gonna see that foul ball one more time for you here. One more time. I thought it was fair, but we'll see that curve out. And as we were in the replay, we got our second out of the inning as Street grounded out. Well, the Cardinals sure could use a quick inning. That's definitely something they would like. Number eight batter, Skrypek, checking in. He had a double, his first at bat. Takes strike number one. Low for ball one. Evens it up, one and one. Yeah, shake the baseball rust off, Howie. That's what it is. <laughs> That one is hit foul down the right field line. Well, that that's definitely a foul ball. That one is foul. Yeah. Howie and I both confirm. We we yes. yeah. okay. Go ahead. Go we put our heads together. We came up with an executive decision. Yes. We're going to appoint a committee to determine. <laughs> we'll send that one back to New York. Have well, them double check it. Well, I think there's a subcommittee to make sure that the committee is okay to to become a committee. As much bureaucracy as we can get in baseball. Absolutely. That's that's what people like about baseball. Is all the red tape. All the red tape. Red tape is good. <laughs> Full count here on Scrapeck. Bradley would love to get a 1 2 3 inning here. 1 2 3 inning here in the third. Misses outside. And that's going to put Scrapeck on with a walk. See, just as you said that. The, the curse of the it's commentator. The, it's the curse of the Smith. The opposite of what I say comes true. Well, tell me I will not win the lottery tonight, yes. then, please. $100 is not going to fall into your lap in the wind here. Number nine batter, Westman, in the box now with Scrypeck on first. Two down. Ducks away from ball one. That one is fouled back for strike one. Again, Coon Raps just looking to get back to the dugout, get back to the plate. I mean, the, the way that uh, the way that uh, Whelan has started this game off, it's uh, you know three-run cushion already for Centennial. That one hit. tails off in the wind there. It ends hit. up being strike two. I say hits may be uh, hard to find against Whelan here. They certainly have proven so far early on through two. That one inside for a ball. Two and two. 
And Bradley definitely a lot of full counts through three innings. Throwing quite a few pitches here so far. We don't have an official count. That one's followed back to the screen. Rolls down in front of us. So batter stays alive, two and two. Yeah, Joe likes to, uh, Joe keeps track of all the all the pitches. He's a, he's a started, stat machine. I started doing it, and then I was like, you know what? I cannot fill those giant sandals of Joe Young. No, it's tough. Oh, nice pitch. Gets him looking for strike three and gets Coon Rapids out of the inning. No additional runs for Centennial. So Coon Rapids has a chance to start putting some runs on the board when we come back on CTM. code prohibits outdoor storage of things like building materials, auto parts, household items, scrap metal, garbage, and more. Thank you for helping our city look its best. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to coonrabbitsmn.gov. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Back here as the wind starts to pick up. Bottom of the second, I'm sorry, bottom of the third inning. Third inning. Third inning. Garrett Rotzing will have his first crack in the batter's box today. Seen having a nice uh, season, three hitting 353 as he stands for this pitch. Cardinals looking to uh, not go down one, two, three for the third time. Shows bunt but pulls back, still in there for a strike. Interesting tactic. Ah, the mind games of baseball. Yeah, the thinking man's game. That and tiddlywinks. You gotta plan your moves. You do. You got to make sure you. Uh, you're, you it's, it's a lot of strategy in tiddlywinks. Got to have your tiddlies and your winks in a row. That's otherwise, right. you're gonna. Because if your tiddlies are not in a row or your winks are not in a row, you're in trouble. Oh, this, yeah. this broadcast has gone off the rails. Oh yeah. What usually happens when you and I are together? That's uh, my <laughs> only specialty at this point. Check swing. They look down first yep. baseline. That is going to be strikeout. Number six for Whelan. Colin McCullough, center fielder, stepping in. McCullough looking to uh, to get his back going, just hitting uh, 067. And that one catches the plate for strike one. So 0 2 the count now. Yeah, again, Whelan quickly ahead in the count. Whelan is definitely dealing. Today. He is definitely dealing. There's no question. That one's fouled back. Coon Rapids batters able to get a little bit of contact there, but only enough to foul it off. Only had one ball put into play by the Cardinals so far. Otherwise, it's been all wheeling. That one's fouled down. That time just protecting the plate. 
making sure he keeps his at bat alive. So 0-2. Oh the count was one down here, bottom three. I think this might be my favorite time of year to be outside because the bugs haven't woken up this yet. Is, this is true. Another foul, extending the at bat. Enough wind to blow off any bugs that are waking up, and most of them are still asleep. That's, so. That is true. Kind of like you and I. So I'll take it. Well, as long as we take turns napping, I think we <laughs> can get away true. with it. <laughs> if it gets is, is an excessive dead air, then we're in trouble. Checks up his swing, and McCullough gets the ball through there. Good eye on that one. Yeah, Whelan looking over at the first base official asking for, uh, or I should say the base official asking for a clarification if that was a strike or not. He says, nope, it's a ball. So one and two the count. That one up high makes it two and two. Good at bat by McCulley here. After going down 0-2 quickly, he's hanging around, followed off a couple. Took a couple balls. Whelan comes back with the heat and gets him for out number two here in the inning. So number nine batter Jacob Powell, left fielder, steps into the box. Powell hitting 133 at the plate. That's strikeout number eight for Whelan. I think it's just seven. Is it seven? Seven so far, yes. Okay. Seven strikeouts and one fly out to right field. So. Oh, that's right. That's he's right. got he's got a chance for eight right here. Gets ahead quickly, 0-2. Oh, the oh, first one was a ball. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Misread the board out there in left field. Got to get my eyes checked. I'm getting too old, Howie. Oh, nice pitch at the there knees. Now it's 1-2. There we go. 1-2 and two with two down. Powell looking to get something going for the Cardinals. Watches that one go by, 2-2. Two, Again, two. you really haven't seen uh, Whelan really out of the zone much tonight. Two and two the count. Powell low on that one. Full count. I'm sorry, Powell. Powell watched that one go by too low. <laughs> so I got a, I got a bad connection. That's what it is. It's the headset. It's, it's the yes. Yeah, it's the headset. Yes. Yeah. I guarantee it. I was thinking about Joe and I got distracted. We, most people do. Full count with two down. Wheelins throw gets through. Powell swings. And that is strikeout number eight for Whelan. Cardinals nine up, nine down through three. But we're down for more baseball, and we'll be back with that on CTN. Wash your hands for 20 seconds, just like Elmo. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. 
Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Chilling in the camping chairs, watching some baseball. Making s'mores. It's great. Making s'mores and taking names. That's right. That's all we There's do. There's a shirt. There's a shirt. That's our, that's our summer shirt, right? That's the name of our new buddy buddy show. That's our that's making our s'mores podcast. and taking names. Our power our podcast. That could be what that could be yeah. as well. The power <laughs> podcast. That's right. Yeah. So back to the top of the order for Centennial. Second baseman, Vinny Rye, standing in here. Single RBI and a stolen base. Last time he was up, he starts the fourth off here as a base runner on a walk. And yeah, not the way you want to start here in the fourth inning, down 3 nothing, but against a pitcher who's uh, dominating your, your lineup. You don't want to give the Cougars any more chances to score some additional runs. And, you know, we really don't know how long... Um, Whelan will be on the mound, but nonetheless, uh, <laughs> he's been very efficient in eight Ks through three innings. That's uh, that's not too bad, not too shabby. Hemmer watches Bradley's first pitch go high for ball one. Hemmer 0 for 2 on the day. Struck out last time he was at bat. One one pitch. Hit into the air and curving in that wind toward right field, that's gonna drop in. And thankfully, it drops into the glove of Tyler Denel. Did Al, did he play, the wind was playing a little tricks with him and you know he had to he had to make sure that he tracked that ball properly and did a good job of it to get that, that first out. Lost his hat, but he caught the ball. And hey, that's more important. That's right. And then, you know, if you never catch the ball in your hat, that's even better. Nice. Jeb on the replay there. They even got the hat falling in slow motion. Look at like that. It. Truck is on it Best today. Best in the business. And Slipka lines this one into left field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. That's going to move Rye over to second. You know, when, you're, when your technical crew is that good, and then you add Dave Emmy to the lineup, I mean, can you imagine? It, it's like, you know, it's like well, being a, that's why I'm here today. They couldn't also afford Joe Yund. They had to cut a corner somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so it was between me or Yund, and since Yund makes more than I do, I guess that uh, that was a logical decision. And I'm here as part of my community service, so they don't have to pay yeah, me that all, and, yeah. yeah. I thought that was the course you were taking through the learning annex. My uh, television my course. Night, my night school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is my uh, my <laughs> senior thesis. So 0 on the count. Runners on first and second with one down. <laughs> Second one, Mrs. Lowe makes it 0-2. Or 1-1, one one. I can read. <laughs> sure you can. <laughs> I skipped that <laughs> class, I'm going to be honest. Oh, I'll, I'll I know. took the TV one instead. They told me it wasn't important. Well, it's easier. The TV one was definitely easier Absolutely. than, the, than the, uh, the reading class. So 2-1 the count. You'd think the big red board with the light-up <laughs> numbers would help me out, but... Here we are. Our graphics are on top of it. So if they I are. say something different than what you see on the screen, trust the screen because Kelly's on it. Well, you know, too, and the, the learning annex isn't real particular about who they let in. Oh, no, not so, at all. Yeah. It's, it's an equal opportunity learning. I was actually just sitting on a curb outside waiting for a bus, and they pulled me inside. They had a quota. They have, yeah, they lose <laughs> their funding if they don't have certain numbers. Fourth inning, and we're off the rails, but Centennial... Rails one to right field. That single by Ivory is going to bring a runner around third to score, and they're going to hold the runners at two and three. So that's a double for Ivory, another RBI. And another run on the board for the Cougars. That Cougars hitting well as uh, head coach Matt Mossy is going to take a walk out to the mound. Of course, we can't see the bullpen from this angle. But I don't know if they've had anybody throwing at this point, you know. And, and you know, Nick hasn't pitched poorly. You know, they've been hitting the ball, timely hitting, 
and they've been hitting for extra bases. Yeah, several doubles in the game here already for the Cougars. We'll get a look at that hit again there. Just great placement to keep that fair. Yep. Really didn't have a play. And again, a bobble catch at first. A lot of uh, a lot of fumbled uh, fumbled catches down here, and yep. and honestly, it might have to do with the temperature. We're just sitting here in the wind, and uh, you know, it might be the arthritis and these old man knuckles, but I can definitely feel old the the chill. Knuckles. The hands are a little well, numb. You're wearing a tank top. Oh, it's again, it's part of the course. It's required. <laughs> Is that part for of my, the annex? <clears throat> yes. It's uh, it's actually performance art. So, oh, so. I'm doing two classes at once here. All right, that's right. That's what I saw. Your that competitive dance class that you're doing. Yes. Okay. I'm not very competitive, but, but I'm you... I'm trying. The nice thing is I get a participation trophy. Right. So well, that's good. I can take that to the pawn shop and hock it for something. I heard you were doing some break dancing, but you weren't even trying. Oh, I, I broke something while I was dancing. That's for sure. That one's popped up. Shallow center field. Ranging in and calling everybody off is McCullough. He's thrown it in. Nice throw to keep the runner at third base. Good job by McCullough there to call everyone off and get that throw in. That is the second out. Well, again, if they can, the way this inning started, if they can get out of it with just the one run, that's uh, that's a win for them. Drew Molitor looking to play that right field line, and he hits it fair. That's going to bring in one. Looks like it'll bring in two, and he's in with a stand-up double. Yeah, again, great piece of hitting. They're able to put that one down the line. Two more runs. Centennial's got three so far this inning, extending their lead out to 6-0. Yeah, scored one in the first, two in the second. Now now so far three in the fourth and that's six runs on six hits howie couple of walks and hit by pitch peppered in there the street singled back in the second inning steps into the batter's box there and watches strike one go by Wind's still kind of shifting around. Yeah, now it's blowing left to right. Just can't make up its mind. As long as it doesn't go around in circles and call the game for a tornado, we're good. <laughs> However, that's hard to do. Well, not a cloud in not, the sky. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see any uh, any tornadoes here today unless Anoka's hard to ballpark. There we go. That one's grounded towards second base. Rotson picks it up, tosses over to first to get the Cardinals out of the inning, but not before the Cougars are able to do a little more damage, put three more up on that scoreboard and take a 6-0 lead. Cardinals back at the top of the order when we come back on CTN. As the world faces the challenges of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Lions recognize that kindness matters now more than ever. And Lions and Leos are finding ways to continue to serve our communities. For more than 100 years, in times of need, Lions always find a way to help those around them. And after we emerge from this, we will be stronger than ever. Visit lionsclubs.org to learn more. I was the lead gunner of the convoy that we had. While I was suppressing fire, I felt a flick on my upper biceps area. Right after my recovery, I had to find myself again and see what else I could do to continue my selfless service. Having an organization like the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, putting me back into working with wounded troops helped me to process my injury. I'm Sergeant Mary Herrera, and my alive date was November 8th, 2003. For more information, visit saluteheroes.org. Good shot of that flag dancing in the wind out in center field. I knew there was some dancing around. Bottom four, Centennial up 6-0 on the Cardinals. An impressive top of the fourth by the by the Cougars and able to double their lead now. And Cardinals uh, 
digging out of a deeper hole against a pitcher who's just uh, throwing strikes. He's just dealing. He is dealing. So Dunnell steps in for his second at bat of the game here, top of the fourth. First pitch is a ball. Oh, at the top of the order here, the uh, Dunnell would love to get something going here and get, a, get on base. Hits that one to right field. Curling toward the foul line, and that one is going to stay inbounds. Donnell does indeed get something started. Holds up at second base. Nice leadoff double to break up the no-hitter. And sometimes that's all a team needs, get that first hit. You know, breaks the... Uh, yeah, well, they've got to get that first hit before they can uh, score a run. It's true. I mean, I guess you could walk for a round. You could, really but, bad, but I don't think uh, I don't think Mr. Uh, Whelan will be throwing too many ball, you know, free passes here today. None so far. We'll take another look at that double there. Just good placement, and the wind helped push that yep. out toward that right field line. O one count to Manders. It looks like the Cougars are trying to keep at second base. He is going to third, and he's going to get there easily. So Dental on the bad pitch there. Again, just a heads up base running, realizing where that pitch was in the dirt. And he's able to take third. And Coon Rapids hanging in there. Has a base runner on third base with nobody out here in fourth. So signs of life, always good. Well, yeah, and a pretty good hitter at the plate, obviously, Mark Manders. And Another pitch down in the dirt. Run's going to come home, and he is going to score on the pass ball. So leadoff double, two stolen bases. Tyler Dental puts Coon Rapids on the board. And an and, uh, unusually tough inning for Whelan. We've seen them uh, really just mow hitters down through the first three. We'll see if he settles back down or if he's uh, a little rattled. Well, he doesn't have anyone on base, so he can just kind of start fresh. That pitch is high. First batter to be up 3-1 against Whelan today. Manders struck out in the first. Takes a strike there to make the count. Three and two. That one in the dirt, that'll be a walk. So Manders hangs in at the plate, gets over to first, and in through two batters here in the fourth, Kern Rapids has a run and a runner on first. Yeah, you know, again, you've got to be able to chip away. They're, they're going to do it here with one run across and nobody out. And There's a good opportunity for the Cardinal batters to see if they can get things going. And that's why we don't play only three innings. Unless it's raining. Unless it's raining, yeah. Or if, we're, or if you're sleepy. <laughs> or if you're sleepy. Yeah. Or if you're late to class. Yeah. So Zach White in the batter's box. Manders over on first. Whelan looks over at first, throws the pitch. Inside for a ball. Good job by Caden Kleba. Grab that ball out of the dirt. But the catcher's not hitting today. Means he gets to leave the pads on the whole time, right? That's right. Well, it might be nice. Might keep, to take the mask keep you a little off. warm. Yeah, I might want to <clears> take the mask guy. off between innings. But Big swing from White there. Good gnats on our audio as well. Mm -hmm. I hear the snap of that glove. One of the unmistakable sounds of baseball. That and the crack of the bat. The crack of the aluminum bat. I do prefer the crack of the wood bat. Of course. Throw over to first, and they got Manders dancing out there. And he's going to get tagged out out there, going out of the baseline, gave himself up. Yeah, nice nice move by, uh, by Willen to get him off the bag. And 
I gotta look at my uh, official scoring here. Caught stealing. Is it CS? It is. Yeah. I guessed right. Or is he picked off? Looks like Wheelan's starting to get it back a little bit here, getting ahead 2-1. I'm sorry, 1-2 in the count. Well, you can see, again, he had, down. he had a huge lead off the bag. Another pitch bounces in the dirt there. Umpire wants to take a look at it. Swap balls, dust that one off. So 2-2 two -two the count. Call that the ballerina count. To the tutu, I see. Ah, I see where I you went with that. I learned that in my dance class. Yeah. Yeah, it's competitive dance. Holds up on his swing. Good eye on that one. Do you Just wear it, a tutu? Fill it back up. When you competitive dance? Um, if the if the piece calls for it. Okay, well, it's, I'm glad you keep an open yeah. mind. Yeah, absolutely. So three to the count. This one is going to be a high. That's another walk. So after striking out eight of nine batters, Wheeler in this inning has walked two of the three that he's faced. We're going to get a courtesy runner out there at first. Adam Powell. Number 17, Adam Powell. Yeah, this, is, uh, this, this inning has certainly been one that we haven't seen from Whelan here yet today. So Jaden Cap flew out to right field, his last at bat. Runner on first and one down. He's got a chance to add to the positivity on the Cardinals side of the box score. First pitch is high, ball one. Whelan looking strongly over it first there. Second pitch down in the dirt, rolls behind. Late jump out there for White, but he is going to get to second base. That's Powell. I'm sorry. Our, our courtesy runner. Yes. Powell. Well, he kind of courtesy jogged that time. But it, well, he had plenty he, of time. Yeah, he didn't have, he didn't have to uh, run full, full out. So 2-0 the count, taking a big lead off second base. Another pitch high. Three zero. Wheeling, trying to keep the wheels from coming off. Still only one on the board for Coon Rapids. Cougar still have that five run lead here. Wheeling throws. Aiden Leesner going to warm up in the bullpen for Centennial. That one does catch the plate for strike one. So three one the count. Runner out at second. Three one count in the situation you're in. You probably watch that pitch every time, yep. right? You'd think so. Unless it's underhand, then you might take a crack at it. Although some of these fast pitch underhand, I don't think I can hit. Like an Ephus pitch. Oh, yeah, yeah. 3 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Cop strikes out for number two. Patrick Wright stepping in here with a runner on second and two down. Coon Rapids is on the board with that run, one run earlier here in the inning. Big lead off second base there as Whelan steps off to get the runner to go back. Some colorful yells from the crowd. Yeah, not a bad little crowd here. Coming to watch the ball game. We're not live tonight, so people. Decent sized crowd for uh, a May 3rd game. Ooh, a lot of groans coming from the Cardinal dugouts on that called strike. That looked, uh, looked a little high and outside. So right down 0-1 in the count. Leans back, evens the count 1-1. One and one. A 
baseball hit from the JV field over the fence into the varsity field, so they called time, so. Is that a home run or are they just practicing? No, they just, uh, oh. it, was, it was an overthrow. Okay. Ooh, that's even Yeah, it was worse. from the catcher to throw him down to second. Throw him down to yeah. second and put it over the wall. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Ooh, there's a lot on that throw. A little major league action there. Whelan's pitch is high. Two and one. So right's ahead in the count, 2-1. Runner out there on second. Looking to keep the inning going for the Cardinals. That one gets called on that inside corner. Yeah, he throws that, two, uh, two. that heat catching that inside part of the plate. Two-two pitch on the way. That is going to be ball three. Unlike my bank account, this count is full. Aha! Well, it depends what your goal is. If, you know, if your goal is twelve dollars and fifty-five cents, then it's full. Mm, still wouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> this one's grounded hard toward third. Scooped up by Westman, fired across the diamond and bounces, rolls back to the fence. Another run's gonna come across for the Cardinals on the throwing error. Well, you just chip away a little bit down uh, six nothing. Now it's six two here. Now it's six two. Well, they're running at first and two away. Now will get scored as an error. Yep. It brings Tommy Dutton up to the plate. That one's tipped back for strike one. And we'll see how things play out over there at first bait. Whelan definitely likes to throw over there and keep those base runners honest. He does. Wright, uh, Wright has his feet set like he is ready to go. Oh, two away. Don't take off with the crack of the bat. That's what you gotta do. That is strike two. Swinging for Dutton. 0-2 the count. There it is. That one is called, that inside edge. That will be out number three for the inning. Another strikeout for Whelan, but Coon Rapids gets two on the board. 6-2 going into the fifth here on CTN. Did you know properties are required to have garbage and recycling service with a licensed hauler? On collection day, place your carts two feet behind the curb. Collection containers should not be placed in the street. And don't forget, containers are not allowed at the curb on non-collection days. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to CoonRapidsMN.gov. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm gonna take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. We are back here on the field with Coon Rapids. Back in the field, Centennial. And in the batter's box for Centennial. Oh, cards Number you. eight batter, Scrypeck. Sorry about that. Not Jeremy. a problem. I talk over you all the time. <laughs> well, and that's what the audience prefers. So They do. Yeah. Cardinals able to score a couple of runs in their bottom half of the fourth to cut that lead to six to two. Two and two, the count now to Scrapeck. 
double run scored and a walk for him here today. Two twos a little high. Full count, 3-2 to the leadoff batter here in the fifth. Centennial still holding a 6-2 advantage. Holds up in that swing, and that is going to be a walk and a base runner for Centennial. Yeah, again, the uh, Cougars start uh, their top half of the fifth with a man on first. So number nine batter Westman steps in. 0 for 2 on the day. Two and zero the count here. Another high pitch, three zero. Not a great way to start. No, Bradley uh, a little bit high in the zone as Zach White's going to take a walk out to the mound to talk to him. And again, the Cougars looking to see if they can get those at least those two runs back that Coon Rapids scored in the bottom of the fourth. Westman on a 3-0 account. Probably going to sit on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he's going to watch this one. Of course, Bradley having to throw that strike at 3-0. and So 3-1. Runner on first. Nobody out here in the fifth. That one misses high again. Scrypeck moves over to second, Westman to first, and we're back at the top of the order. And again, Centennial threatening again here. Top of the fifth. Rye batting left-handed. One for two on the day. RBI and a run scored. Runners at one and two. Bunts it down left field line. That is going to stay fair, and he's going to bunt for a single. Nice piece of hitting. That's a perfect bunt. You're not expecting it in that situation. Your third baseman's playing back, and, and uh, of course, Bradley couldn't come off the mound that quickly. BT, that's the abbreviation for bunt. Bunt, BT. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. I'm learning. Now, if you had a bunt cake, would it be BNT? Um, probably BC for bunt cake. Okay, all right. If I had to guess. First pitch to Hammers High. Base is loaded, nobody out. This pitch is in for strike number one. Again, Bradley in a, in a uh, tough situation here with the bases juiced and None away. And I'm sure Brendan Hammer would like to bring some more runs home here. We'll watch as that one. Good pitch. That was pretty. And one, two, the count now. Getting one out here is huge because you have that double play potential out in the field and you can get out, get out unscathed. Get some swing and big strikeout for the Cardinals. Yeah, he needed that out. Good pitching by Bradley here. Working out of a bases loaded jam to get that first out. And now all you need is somebody to put it on the ground, turn two and get out with no damage. Yeah, pitch a little bit high, but he offered at it. That'd be nice if they could get a tailor-made double play. Right. DH Slipka has come around to score twice already today. That one's grounded through the first base side. That's gonna be two RBI. As the throw comes home a little late, we'll leave runners on the corner. Well, they did get those two runs back. Somehow their six run lead is reestablished. They did indubitably. And Matt Mossy is uh, gonna take another walk out, which I think we'll see a new pitcher. 
We'll see who they bring in. So you'll see it, this hit again here down that right field line, just right under the batter. Good job to stay out of the way, not interfere. Brings two more runs home for Centennial. And it looks like we indeed are going to get looks like McCullough's a gonna pitching change out yep. there. It looks like McCullough's coming in. We'll see. Bradley head back to the deck out there. McCullough out on the mound. Well, we'll step away for a minute while we get our new pitcher warmed up. We'll keep it warm for you here on CTN. Did you know Coon Rapids has a city code regulating the height of your grass? Grass and weeds must be kept under eight inches high. Thank you for helping our city look its best. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to CoonRapidsMN.gov. Welcome back. There we see McCullough warming up on the mound. Yeah, we got Mason Myrie going to take his position over in center field. McCullough, a right-hander there. First batter he's going to face is Ivory. So Brady Ivory today has reached base all three times. He's got two doubles and a reached on error so far today. Came around to score in the fourth. Runners on the corners for the Cougars. That 8-2 lead. As Ivory gets ready to step into the box here. Well, this is uh, this is McCullough's first outing of the season on the mound. Get an opportunity to see what he, he can offer. His debut endeavor on CTN from the center of the diamond here on CTN gets a strike swinging on his first pitch there to Ivory. Always nice to start out ahead in the count. Yep. Let's you dig into that bag a little more. Some more pitches you can use. Quick second strike there to Ivory. Are you a fan of the stirrups? The uh, the look that uh, May that McCullough has. No, we've we've talked. I like it. a long time ago, but when I played baseball, I was definitely a stirrups kind of guy. This one skied out to center field, caught there. Runners going to tag from third and come home. So that is a sack fly there for Ivory. So that'll make it nine two now. I was <clears throat> I've always known that. Uh, that, you know, you'd like to stir up trouble. Oh, for sure. I'd like to stir up some chili. Oh, I'd like to stir up some chili. I stir up my cereal when I pour the milk in. Yep. It all has to be, it all has to be all wet. Right. You got to turn it around a little I bit before it. you eat it. Yeah. Whelan grounds it over to third. Good stretch at first base for Patrick Wright to get that third out. So a couple runs come in. 9 to the lead now for the Cougars. Cardinals batting when we come back on CTM. I've been driving a truck for 40 years now. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. Like the trucks can't stop quickly. It takes my 80,000 pound truck 200 yards to come to a complete stop. So I always do my best to give a lot of cushion. It helps when other drivers realize that and do the same. Please give trucks the space we need so we can all stay safe. It's our roads, it's our safety. How was school? Birthday, mama, safe to take a step out. 
Music can help you express how you're feeling. When you can't find the language, find the lyrics. Welcome back to CTN's coverage of Prep Baseball at Coon Rapids High School. Bottom of the fifth inning, about to kick off here. 9-2 lead for Centennial. And out on the mound, Will Whelan continues. A little bit of a struggle that last inning, gave up a couple runs, yep. however, he's still still sitting on a lot of strikeouts, Howie. Well, and, the, and his, uh, his squad was able to uh, put up an additional three runs here in, the, in their top of the fifth, so now they he comes back with a seven run cushion here at nine to two. With 10 strikeouts on the day for him so far. He was perfect through three. That fourth inning, Coon Rapids was able to, to get to him a little bit. So leading off here is gonna be number eight, Garrett Rotzi on second base. Rotzi looked to see if he can get something started here in the bottom of the fifth. A little bit bigger of a hole to dig out of. As long as I don't show Joe this annotation notebook that I'm doing, <laughs> I'll be fine. Definitely some rookie mistakes in here. That one's fouled to the right side. First baseman does have a play on it. Molitor tracking that one down as it curved in the wind. Yeah, nice job of Molitor coming in, making just staying with it. Well, that wind blowing straight yep. in from center field, though. So McCullough up to the plate now. Our favorite phrase when pitchers bat, what is it? Chance help, to help, help his, own, his cause. own cause. There Correct. it is. We should get paid by how many times we say that every time a pitcher bats. No question. That pitch is high. Wind's starting to whistle a little bit in my, uh, in my headphones here. What song is it whistling? Uh, Winds of Change. By, oh, uh, by Scorpion. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Good job. It's the best I had on short notice. Three straight balls from Whelan here. McCullough stands in for the 3-0 pitch. And that is going to be a high ball four, four pitch walk. McCullough makes his way out there and the Cardinals have a base runner. Jacob Powell up to the plate. Well, again, always the way you want to start, get that leadoff runner on, especially when you're down by seven. McCullough dancing over it first, he's going back. I haven't seen a good hidden ball trick in a long time. They're tough to pull off they successfully. Are. They are. Even in the majors, you only get them once in a while. Yeah. Whelan's pitch. Hit to left field. It's gonna be out number two. And we'll swing back around to the top of the order. Donnell with a double in the fourth inning and then able to come around on a couple of bad pitches and score that first run for the Cardinals. Well, we talked about uh, earlier in this game, they liked Danella at the top of this lineup. Two away, seeing if he can keep this inning alive. That one's hit into shallow center field and he's not gonna get there. McCullough rounded second there and had a scamper back. To yeah, get with, there in time. With the wind blowing in from center the way it is, it kind of it kind of kept that ball from going out as far as Hemer, Brendan Hemer thought. And that ball dropped in front of him. Manders stepping in. Two on now for the Cardinals with two down. Pitch from Whelan. Is high ball one. 
See some shadows starting to creep onto the field yep. as the sun continues to drop westward in the sky. It usually does where it, dr it drops. Or I guess more specifically as the earth spins and the position in the sky changes. The sun's not moving, we are. Th this is very true. Shout out to Galileo. Yeah, I'm sure he's watching. Two of the count. He's a big fan of Cardinal baseball. Well, we'll take the supporters where we can get them. Mike Galileo. He was supposed to run camera tonight, but couldn't make it. Yeah. But two won the count. Two runners on, two down. Yeah, he couldn't be here. He, he did have an accident. He's okay, but he fell and had a concussion. He was seeing stars. So that's why he couldn't make it. <laughs> no question, Howie. Three won the count now. Manders watches that strike for a full count. I would have done the exact same thing. I would have as well. Three one with two big two guys on there. Got to be your, your pitch, otherwise watch it go. Make the pitcher earn it, yep. right? Full count, two down, two base runners. Opportunity for the Cardinals. Whelan looking to get the Cougars out of the inning. Runners are going. They hit them. And that hit. I think, we're gonna see a I think we're gonna see a pitching change. As head coach Jake Howells is gonna take a walk out to the mound. We saw earlier in this contest, Leesner warming up and uh, number seven for the Cougars. And there's a good possibility that uh, he will enter the game as he's kind of warming up his arm over Stretching there by the his dugout. Arm, yeah. yep. We'll get another look at that hit by pitch. i put a third base runner on for the Cardinals here with two down and indeed, number seven's coming into pitch. For the Cougars. So we're gonna pitch you out to a commercial break. We'll be back with more baseball here on CTM. Two, the Centennial lead as they bring in a new pitcher here, bottom of the fifth with the bases loaded and two down. Aiden Leeser on the mound for the Cougars. He'll be, he'll be facing Zach White. He's uh, pitched three and a third. He's given up a couple of hits, base on balls, a couple of strikeouts. One batter hit by pitch and he's yet to uh, give up any earned runs. Well, it's an opportunity for the Cardinals here with the bases loaded. They're juiced. Ducks on the pond, as they say. Zach White watches strike one there. Base runners are getting real aggressive there. As soon as that pitch is thrown, they're getting a good jump. One and one the count. That one's popped foul. Might be playable, it's gonna be close. And that is just out of play over the visitor's dugout. You didn't bring your glove today, did you, Howie? I did, but it's- Chase uh, that one down? It's in the car. Mm. Along with my coat, right? Yeah, and it's, yeah along with, <laughs> exactly. And it's uh, Tank top's kind of a leather a glove. Chilly, yeah. You know, it's a leather winter glove. It's, oh. <laughs> it's not actually a baseball glove. But the isotoner? Yeah, it's the isotoner. That one is grounded foul. Third baseline. So one, two. Remains the count. Big opportunity here for Coon Rapids. I put my gloves away for the winter. That was your first mistake. Yeah, I know, right. 
Meister's pitch is in the dirt. Luckily for the Cougars, it bounces off club and rolls yeah, he into did, visible fair territory, but he did not know where that was. He did not. So two and two the count now. White looking to put some runs on the board for his team. There that it is going to be a clean strikeout to get the Cougars out of the jam there. So no runs after giving up a couple of walks and a hit by pitch. Cougars get out of the inning and hold on to their 9-2 lead. Going into the sixth here on CTM. What do we do? You may not be able to plan ahead for a ghost encounter. Under the dining table now! But you can plan ahead for natural disasters. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Maybe it's the apocalypse. Know your evacuation routes and decide on a safe emergency meeting location. Here? I know. What a big Orlando. Protecting your family is the best plan you can make. So pass the Proton Pack to the next generation and visit ready.gov slash plan to get started. Any vehicles left outside on your property must be in operable condition and parked on an improved surface with current registration displayed. And repairing or dismantling vehicles outside is a violation of city code. For more information on this and other city codes, log on to coonrabbitsmn.gov. Nice shot of the green fields here. Greenfield's blue sky, that's baseball season, Harry. That is baseball season. And we are in the midst of it. We are in the midst of the baseball. Yes, we are. Centennial up 9-2 here as we start the sixth. A couple errors on the board there for the Cardinals. But just some good hitting from this Centennial lineup. Yeah, nine runs on seven hits. Not too bad. Not Just too shabby. Molitor will lead this inning off. McCall still out on the mound. Molitor's had a nice day at the plate. Double back in the fourth inning. Two RBI on that double yep. as well. This one's popped up. Deep to right field. Going back and way over the head of Denno. Molitor's gonna hold up at two. Another two bagger. Heard his teammates yelling three from the dugout there. I think. Uh, Come on, stretch it. The cold wind and the uh, the muscles begged him to stop it too. That's usually another happens look with at me that. with donuts. Another look at that cut there. Yeah, over the head A of the deep Denel. hit. Yeah. They've been hitting the ball well. That's their is now their eighth hit of this afternoon. <laughs> Seven run lead and they've left eight base runners on yep. as well. First pitch to street outside for Baldwin. Molitor out there at second. At this point probably isn't too worried about somebody keeping him on. That one is lined. Shallow center field, throw coming in. Street's gonna push for second, knowing that they're not throwing the ball out there with the guy standing on third. Well, they didn't hit the cutoff guy, and that, when that happens, it gets by him and allows that runner to take second. So now with nobody out, runners at second and third. Two runners in scoring position. Scrypack up. For Scrypack and Scrypack. Came around twice to score. He's walked twice today and has a double. Talk about a good day at the plate. Yep. He takes strike one. You know what I consider a good day at the plate? It's when I go to the buffet. I consider it a good day when I eat everything that's yep. on there. That's how I was yep. raised, Howie. Finish, clean your plate. The clean plate club. That's how my parents brainwashed me. There's no membership card. <laughs> that's right. No actual tangible reward. Just sometimes heartburn. Not too much as a kid. No. The hamburger helper really didn't kick the, the heartburn in there. <laughs> Tuna helper sometimes as well. 
One one count and that pitch misses. It's an acquired taste, but muskrat helper isn't too bad. I know that was uh, very popular with uh, Leif Erickson, the early explorers yeah, up in the it, Hudson it is, Bay area. Yeah. That one sky down the right field line. It's hooking and stays fair. That's going to bring in one. Runner rounds third base. And he's held up oh, back I thought, at third. I thought they were going to bring him in. I did as well, Howie. That makes but it 10-2. Another double for the Centennial Banners. Oh, they've been they've been doing a good job of finding that the, the green in right field. Well, and the wind definitely helps to, to oh. hook that away from the fielder and toward the line, but they've been dropping them right in there. On the left side of the line, like driving in England. That first pitch fouled back by Westman. Just like driving in England. Keep it on the left side of the line. Yep. So runners at two and three now. Still nobody out here. That one's in the dirt. But stop. Great job by White yep. to keep that one down in the yep. front. Again, just keep it in, keep it on. Let your uh, body do the work. Keep it in front of you. That's when you kind of think it'd be useful to have those uh, those hockey shin pads. The Correct. Big, big uh, foam walls you can drop down to the ice there. A lot of uh, a lot of hockey goalies play catcher in baseball. Yep. During the summertime. Aaron no. Yund. Aaron Yund. Aaron Yund is one. Is one. Yeah. His dad Joe played hockey in high school. As yes, well. he did. Yeah. Just ask him. Didn't play Again. catcher though. No. Didn't play catcher. Just hockey. No, he played catcher, but he did in the minors. His, his uh, six-year career in the minors. Well, he was a coal miner and he played catcher for the, yes. uh, the caught, company caught the coal. team. Yes. Company team. <laughs> They'd throw the throw the old coal around. That's yep. what they used to say back in the yep. the fifties. 3-1 the count to Westman. Runners on second, third, still nobody out. McCullough on the mound. That one's grounded toward third base, knocked down. Throw is bounced, but they get him. Nice stop. Yeah, really nice, nice play Good. by Wright. Nice to get that first out. Yep. But there's still runners on second, third. So still a threat back to the top of the order. Who's on first? No one right now. Ball one to Rye. Ten to the lead. Centennial would love to add a couple more here. Nice strike from McCullough. Yeah, he needs he again needs that with uh, with just a one away, and it certainly would. Uh, now down by eight, trying to limit it here in the top of the sixth. That one is hit to right field, but that one's going to hook way foul. Yeah, again tried to go down that right field line. And Dennell's playing a little closer to that right yep. field line than you might normally, but they're still managing to drop in there. I know the wind is definitely yes, coming to is. play. Well, now the wind's blowing left to right. That pitch is high. Two two the count. The old ballerina count. Right hits that one down on the ground, diving at second. His run, he's not able to get it. One run comes in. And that is an RBI single for Rye. Second RBI of the day. I'll make it 11 to 2. Brennan Himmer up. Himmer, one of. Two Cougars who has not made it all the way around the bases at some point during the day today. Otherwise, everyone's come across. Hemmer and Whelan are the two. Whelan 
did his work from the pitcher's mound, though, on the defensive side. First pitch is high for ball one. Calls pitches inside. Ball dropped by White, but knocked down close enough. Yeah, no way for it. No damages done. Nope, no way for the run to come home on that. That may have been an opportunity for that runner to take second, because you know they're probably not throwing. Solid pitch there from McCullough. That makes it two and one. Still just one down. Another good strike from McCullough. Starting to find his groove. Just like Stella. Well, she got it back. Yeah. She had it, she and then found she it. lost it. Then she got it back. She then she it. got it back. Yeah. That one is grounded, bounced right over the bag. Not quite able to knock it down at second base there and get the out. So that is another run in for Centennial. Makes it 12 to two. And uh, Coach Mossy gonna take, another walk, take a walk out to the mound to talk to McCullough. Rye able to make it all the way over to third on that. So Manders did have a chance to knock it down there as it came over the bag at second. But uh, squeaked through, got past him. Good heads up base running from Rye. Push that over to third base. 12-2 game now here in the top of the sixth. One down, runners on the corners. Looks like we're gonna have a new batter here for Centennial. Jake Del Medico, looking for his first hit of the season. So the 12-2 advantage, Jake Del Medico slips in here, steps in for Slipka. Slips in for Slipka? I'll take it, I'll accept it. Okay. Judges I'd ruled. wait for the paperwork. Judges rule, yeah. accept it. <laughs> Just show me showing fair ball. <laughs> That one's grounded softly towards second base. Slow roller, tossed over to first for the out. But a run comes across the plate. We'll make it 13 to two. And Hemmer moves over to second base. So runner on second, two down. Ivory in the batter's box. Couple of RBI today. That one's popped up. Down the left side and out of play. A little chill to that wind now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little chilly here. Hit, solid to right field, that's fair. Rolling down, runner comes around third. Throw going to second as the runner holds up. And what do you know, Hemmer comes around to score, one of those two Centennial players that hadn't made the full trip. See, he heard you. He, he does. Said, he said, I, can't, uh, I can't let Jeremy Smith say that about me. Well, I thought it was supposed to be the opposite way. I know, apparently it, it didn't happens. work. Yeah. Leaser is up here in this spot. Got a new batter there.
evens the count one and one. Call this pitch. Gets fouled off to make it 2 1. Two outs, runner on first base. Pitch misses inside to make it 2 2. So the uh, Cougars able to put one in the first, two in the second, three in the fourth, three in the fifth. So far, five here in the sixth. Some crooked numbers indeed. Yes. Now, my official weather app here says that the wind is actually slower than when the game started, but it doesn't feel like It does that. not feel like it. That's going to be a swinging strike three that ends the inning. Finally, but not after, not before Centennial is able to put five more up, extend their lead to a 14-2. We'll come back with the bottom of the sixth here on CTN. By 12 runs, Howie. Yeah, so uh, they're going to have to uh, at least score three to keep this game alive. The 10 run rule with prep baseball. Got to play five innings, and if you're up by 10, at the end of an inning, oh, they call it. Now, we did talk earlier about Centennial's game on Osseo and how that may, may have falsely inflated their numbers. Well, not th not However, today. 13 hits and 14 runs seems pretty legit. I would, I would say. That one's fouled back. It's a two on the count. DH Jaden Cop in for his third at bat today. That one catches for a strike. Two and two. Time to get that rally cap on, Howie. I have it on. Or a stocking cap. It's getting chilly. That's the beauty of a Minnesota May. Yeah. It could be maybe 50 it, degrees. It, it could be 80 degrees. It may be 80. It may be, it may be 20. <laughs> it it may, may snow. It may rain. Maybe nice. Maybe not. That one is hooked down right field line. That's going to stay fair. Cobb's going to hold up with a single. And that's the way you want to start an inning where you got to score some runs? Yes. I mean, you got a lot of runs to score, but you got to score at least three to keep it alive. Hey, you can't get to home plate if you don't touch first base. This is true. It's the baseball version of a journey of a thousand miles. <laughs> kind of like this broadcast. Feels like a thousand miles uh -huh. sometimes. But it's been a fun thousand miles. Yes, it has. We've learned a lot. We we have we've learned uh, we learned that you're a competitive dancer and okay. that you have participated at the learning annex. Yeah, that friendship is magic. Yeah, it is, and we have a lot of it. Absolutely, that two color guys is a bad call. <laughs> 
one and one hey, the we, count. We to make it work. We make it work. We entertain. We're here to entertain the audience. Well, we're here to talk some baseball too. Oh, that too. It's a good time. Nice to be doing outdoor sports without, you know, the full body suit no, and three I scarves and on yep, icicles nose. on the beard. Yeah. yeah. So, although if <laughs> if we go too late, I may get a couple tonight. We'll see. One and two, the count. Gets right on strike three called. Dutton stepping in, 0 for 2 on the day. But he's got a runner over there on first with one down. That one misses for ball one. That one's fouled off the right-hand side toward the TV truck. Well, I still have audio and video, so That's I don't good. think it hit anything oh, important. Heaven's not here. He usually runs out of the truck to try and catch him, but yes. Couldn't afford Hennen today. No, it's because it Emmy's here. here. Yeah. See the limo he came in. It was. It's the stretch Hummer. Yeah. Those are yeah. not cheap. No. T and with gas right now, I yeah. can only imagine. TC Bear was driving. Well. Two on count, that one misses. Ball three. You see Dutton signaling for a cop over on first to stay put. Three one, one down, runner on first. Cardinals need to score three to keep the game going. Dutton watches that one go, that's a walk. So it's not the it's not the tying run at the plate. It, no. What is it? The, the surviving run, the continuing run. Continuing run. The, the continuing the run keep, is keep at the, the game plate. alive run. I don't know if there's an actual term for it. We're gonna coin it now. You better trademark it. I'll call my attorney. I think a lot of people are calling their attorneys after this broadcast. <laughs> Protest. Get them off the air. Absolutely. It's more me than you, but yeah. Road scene showing bunt. Pulling back, but taking the strike. It's the runners at first and second with one down. Road scene watches strike two. Nice pitch there. Leicester's got good velocity. Down 0 2 in this kind of position. Tough spot for a batter. Good eye by Rosine. See that one go high. Ball one. One and two. Got to keep battling out there, right? Absolutely. Well, you have to. It's in the contract. <laughs> I'd say he's going to call time as he steps out of the box. Now he goes with the long pants option, mm -hmm. which with the, the breeze today might have been the right call. That one's high, ducks his head back and out of the way, 2-2. Two, two. Definitely say the stirrups would have been a chilly choice today. Yeah. Kind of like the tank top it, for you. You know, it's it's more of a statement than a choice. Yeah, it's it looks good on you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah. I like to show off my goosebumps. <laughs> Quite the nice looking goosebumps. Thank you. And after going down 0-2, Rotzine does a good job hanging in there to battle back to a full count. That one misses high. Great at bat for Rotzine. Yep. Rotzine, sorry. And that loads the bases up. One down. And who's stepping in the plate, Howie? It's McCullough. McCullough. You know what that means? That means he's going to help his own cause. He's got a chance to help his own cause. It's a good thing we don't do these live with like a chat window, like like the internet oh, that streamers would be fun. who play video games. That would be great. We'd have to get somebody to answer for us though, and speak back. And One of these days, we might have to delve into that chaos. Yep. Maybe what we'll do is uh, 
It's one of these games that you and Joe are doing. I'll jump in and I'll. All right, uh, let's I'll, do it. I'll handle the chat. All right, let's do it. Seems like a great way for me to get fired. Well, if you're looking for ways. <laughs> <laughs> that one is high. <laughs> one and one the count. Now, if your lights are here, you don't want to walk around. No. You also don't want to give up a double or a triple. No, if you him, you want to give up a, a double play ball. Or just get the guy at the plate. Just get that strike out. Or and get then it in the zone. Play anywhere. Yeah. There you go. 2 1. The count to McCullough. That one's hit to left field. Is it going to drop in time? It gets past the left fielder. One run's going to come in. Second run right behind him. Coon Rapids scores two on the hit. Oh, nice, uh, nice piece of hitting there. Get a couple of runs across. Makes it a 14-4 ball game with just one away. Brings up Jacob Powell. Powell still looking for his first hit of the day. With one down and two guys on the base pads, he's got a chance to bring someone in. That one's high for ball one. Leiser has been missing high on a lot of these. Let's see if he brings that one down here. Kicks, fires, that one. Almost one's hit him. Oh, it did hit him. Umpire's going to say that caught him, and that'll load the bases back up. So now you have a force at any base as head coach Jake Howell's going to come out to the mound. I haven't seen any work in the bullpen for the Cougars, so this is just a, uh, a visit, talk a little strategy. Settle your pitcher down a little yep. bit. Tell him where to focus. Don't worry about the base runners. We always we do have somebody that do, does that for you, by the way. It settles me it down. Settles you down when you yes, need settling. That is my uh, yeah. comfort. Usually it's Teddy jo Bear. Usually so. it's Josh Udvig, but yep. he's not here today. Josh Udvig, I call him my comfort Teddy yeah. Bear. But uh, you know, if there's <laughs> lightning, it kind of freaks me out a little uh, bit. I understand. Thunder, especially. Yeah. Yeah. You need or if a loud train you need goes to be by. Cuddled. Mm -hmm. cuddled. Just need to, need to need to know everything's okay. Yeah. So. Josh is big enough to protect me yes, from pretty and, much and anything. Yeah, absolutely. And Josh is the kind of guy who would love to do it. I know. Absolutely. He's a good friend. Mm. Yeah, okay. He's, he's, it's a little he's Josh. I, I, I'd give you good or friend, but not both at the same time. And if you're listening, Josh, I'm absolutely oh, I'm, just kidding. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure Josh is listening. He's listening. He knows. Oh, yeah. Josh is always listening. Even when he's not, he is. Well, he's got Nate, his eyes and ears. That's true. Monitoring everything. His guy in the chair, Nate. Yeah, Nate, Nate, uh, Nate has his hands in every every aspect. Absolutely. He's Nate. Base is loaded. One out. One over the count. That one's grounded toward first base, scooped up, tagged for the force out, but another run comes in for the Cardinals. Well, that'll keep this game alive for Coon Rapids. Keep the game rolling. That survival run we talked about. Continuation run, that's what it was. But Centennial gets that second out, which they were looking for. Yep. So Manders comes up. Two down, runners on, so two and three. First pitch strike, catches the zone. Manders follows that one back. Makes it 0-2. Can you say comeback? Long, long way to has, go. has put up three here in the inning. It is a long way to go. Oh and two. That one's drilled out to center field. That's gonna drop and bring in one more run. Second. Right behind slides, and that's two RBI for Manders with a single. All of a sudden, it's 14 7. They've uh, equaled the output of Centennial. Five runs scored here in the bottom half of the sixth for the Cardinals.
So Zach White steps up to bat here. He came around to score back in the fourth. Pass ball. And Manders makes his way over to second. Definitely not the inning that Centennial wanted. No, they thought that, you know, they, they're up by 12. They have an opportunity to close it out in one inning less. And now they're going to Coon Rapids with some, finally some good timely hitting and run production. That one's curving in the wind. And that's going to drop in fair. Run coming home. Catcher not ready for the ball. And the Cardinals have batted around this inning. Just what Dr. Grover ordered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Grover. Yeah, I, watch, I watch the PSA commercial yep. breaks, right? Yep. So batting for the second time this inning. Jaden Cop. Two down, runner at first. That pitch is down and the runner moves to second. Real big turn there on second. He thought about going to three. He did. Settles back. One out of the count to Cop. Cop hits that one. Curving in the wind. Dropping back though and making the catch. Is Skripek. However, the Cardinals able to put up a cricket number of their own. Six runs this half inning to make it 14-8. You know what that means, Howie? We still have some ball left in front we of us. We got the seventh inning coming back here on CTN. And we're back for the top of the seventh. Jeremy Smith, Howie Shapiro. Baseball action, Coon Rapids. Had a huge half inning there in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, they uh, they did a really nice job of getting right back into this ball game. Now just trailing by six where they once trailed when they stepped to the plate in the bottom half of the sixth, they trailed by 12. So they cut that lead in half in the sixth. Big defensive seventh inning for them here. Obviously, you don't want to give up any more runs. Looks like we're going to have a conversation here. Coon Rapids in the Empire. I think we have some position changes out in the field. Just passing that information along so the umpire knows who's where, and what changes were made. John Ankerfelt on the mound now for 
the Cardinals. See if there's any other changes in the field. Molitor follows the first pitch out. Inkerfield's pitched a couple of innings. That one fouled off to make it 0-2. Just getting word that the Coon Rapids coach has been benched for the game. Oh. oh. There's some contention over the strike zone earlier. That one's fouled off. Well, apparently he didn't, uh, he and the home plate ump did not agree eye to eye, and he got the heave-ho. 0 oh, 2 the count here to Molitor. Straightens that one out for a single through the left side. Uh, he continues his nice day at the plate. He's got a couple of doubles and a single, I believe. A couple of doubles and a single, a few RBI. Not a bad day's no. work. Also nice when you can get to the plate five times in a seven inning game. Usually means your team's putting up some runs. Yeah. So that's the 14th hit of the game for the Cougars. First pitch strike. Two Street. And that one's fouled off. Comes rolling right back to the umpire. Can't do that one if you try. No, that was thrown by a coach. Well, you're blocking my view, Howie. No, I I've been told that before. Can't see the foul ball as well enough. Wind is definitely picking up now, coming in from center field. Throw over to first, runner dives back. Now that the sun's starting to set and we got that chill wind, the tank tap has definitely turned me into a uh, plucked turkey. Here. Yes, you. Well, well, you took it off for a while, and people complained, so I'm glad you did, put it back on. I had to put it back on. There are uh, health and safety regulations. Yes. <laughs> there are minors here. 0-2 pitch gets fouled off. That one's going to go over our heads. Well, most things do. And well stated, Howie. <laughs> well stated indeed. So the count remains 0-2. Molitor on first base. Nobody out here. Top seven. That one's grounded through to the second baseman. Throw to first, gets one. Not in time, but the fielder's choice gets one out. Nice play by the Cardinals defense. Well, they did get that lead runner, and that's what they need to do. Get the lead runner, get the first out of the inning. Scrypex come around to score three times in the game. Two walks, two doubles. That pitch is in the dirt off the catcher. And the street will make his way over to second base. So yep. knowing Coon Rapids can put up six and a half inning, Centennial looking to add a little more insurance on top of that six run lead. Well, after Coon Rapids scored their two runs in the bottom of the fourth. That's when uh, Centennial came back and scored three in the top of the fifth. Nice pitch there. Evens the count at one and one. Scribe back watches that one. Miss for ball two. Street kind of dancing out to a lead back there at second base. 
commander's uh, going through the proper motions to try and keep him honest. I kind of disrupt him a little bit. Scrapex steps out of the box, calls for time. Two on count. That one is popped up. Left side of the infield. Enders drops the catch. Puts another base runner on. Or Centennial. Yeah, kind of hit the heel of his glove and popped out. It'll be another error for the Cardinals. That's Should have been out number two, unfortunately, for Coon Rapids. That keeps. Another. That one's hit to left field. Wind's tailing it off. Catch is made out in center field. Throw goes over to third to keep the runners on. And that's the second out. Brings you back to the top of the order. Back around top. His sixth that bad of the day. He had that great unexpected bunt back in the fifth to load the bases up. An inning that uh, Centennial was able to put some runs on the board. In fact, they've put numbers on the board every inning but the third tonight. So two runners on, two out. One of the count. Ryan watches that one go high. 2 0. Cardinals uh, just trying to get out of this inning without any damage and get back to the play, trailing by six. Gonna throw back to second base, and that's gonna roll out to center field. Luckily, your center fielder's in close enough to make sure that doesn't do any more damage. Yeah. Trying to catch that runner napping on second. I don't know how comfortable it would be to nap on second base. <laughs> I mean, using it as a pillow, I guess. Well, maybe. Good pitch, swings through to get a strike. Well, some people sleep on standing Ryan. up or some on one people, leg. That's kind of kind of scary, the flamingo people? Yeah, the, fl yeah. the one-legged sleepers? Whole, their whole group of people, flamingo people, yeah. they call yeah. them one-legged sleepers. Yeah. It's the club you can join. There's a group online yeah. you can. Should hop right to it and see if we can join. <laughs> I'm one step ahead of you. Three and one the count after that pitch misses. Coon Rapids would love to get out of the inning right here. Centennial looking to put some more runs on their lead. Two down, three one count, runners on one and two. Rye swings, pops that one up and that's gonna be out of play, full count, three two. Yeah, the anchor field just trying to come in here and get the, uh, the cards back to the plate. Gets the signal, shakes it off. Doesn't like what he's seeing, looks over to first base. Full count with two down, steps off the mound. Well, stays on the mound, oh, steps, steps off, off the, the rubber. rubber. Yeah. There we go. That's a, lot, that's a big step. Steps off the rubber. <laughs> they have long legs to do Very that. Long legs. Well, <laughs> maybe he was sleeping on one leg. That's true. Yeah. Where are their flamingos? The flamingo people. 3 2 pitch comes in, that one's popped up. That is going to be out of play. Sounds like a bad Stephen King novel, The Flamingo People. I'd probably read it. Yeah, I know you would. Nah, I'd listen to the audio book while yep. I was driving. Yep. Yeah. Not to be confused with flamenco, which is a competitive dance. That Correct. I 
We had to learn that in the in the class. But no, I'm sure you did. How were you at that, by the way? Um, it's harder by yourself, yeah. but yeah. you know, there was an odd number of people in the class, and everybody had partnered up. Well, you're definitely I odd, that, so yes. that, that you fit right in. No question. <laughs> Three, two count with two down, two base runners. Runners go. Ball is fouled off again. Staying alive at the plate is Ryan. Just wearing out those base runners. They keep running all the way. And then they gotta go back. Three, two. This one is hit deep to center field. Going back and making the catch, getting the Cardinals out of the inning. So no additional runs for Centennial. But a huge six run deficit. We're going to the bottom of the seventh. Cardinals back at the top of the order. Oh, I'm sorry. Batting seventh, Rotine, when we come back. Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Wash hands now. <laughs> Hand washing is one of the best ways to stay healthy all year long. Owen, when you came into my life, it was a whirlwind. I just can't do it. We didn't know what the future would hold, but we knew you would always be a part of it. Adopting you was the best decision in our life. And I am so proud to call you my son. Let's go crazy. Here in the arena, Cardinals fans looking for a rally here in the bottom of the seventh. 14-8 is the lead by Centennial. Cardinals have scored eight runs on five hits. Six of those coming in the bottom of the last inning. Anders Westman on the mound now for Centennial. Gonna try and finish this out. Westman out there on the mound. He's also playing third base as well, so he's quite the athlete. Tough to do both. Yeah, Peyton Street's gonna move to third. And I'm trying to locate the number over at short. Well, John Ankerfield will lead this inning off. He's gonna ground it towards short, slow roller on the grass, throw over to first in time. One pitch, one out for Centennial, looking to close out this game. Vinny Rye is going to move over to short. That means we have a new second base minder. I think it's uh, Molitor at second. And I think it uh, looks like Whelan, who started the game on the mound, is over at first. So there we go. Got a little rotation, but how he's on top of it. That one's a grounded foul. One and one the count to Dutton. One down, Cardinals down six here in the bottom of seventh. And that one's in the dirt and rolls back to the screen. Yeah, I love it. As we see the shadows starting to fall across the mound. That one's grounded, same spot as the last one. Throw to first. And those are the first two routine grounders we've seen all game, Howie. A lot of long doubles, a yep. lot of hits down that right field line. We didn't, uh, we must be giving some mis misinformation because Matt Mossy's out there. He didn't, uh, the umpire did not ask him to leave. Maybe another hmm. of the coaches were, but somebody was feeding us a line maybe. We'll have to check in with Neil Highlight Tenon on what the lowdown was from that. Oh yeah, I'm sure he'll, he's got uh, he's got his finger on the pulse of that. Rotzian steps in here with two down. 
One and one count. Now it's filed back. One and two. So if this score stands, the uh, Centennial Cougars will go to four and four. And the Cardinals will drop to four and six. A miss is up high. Good eye by Rokesy. Cardinals would like that uh, not to happen, though. They'd like to continue this inning. High bouncer toward third, fielded, fired, and out. A 1-2-3 inning, just like they started it. The Cougars get it back together and close this one out 14-8 in seven innings. We'll give the Cardinals credit for scoring six runs in the bottom of the six to keep this game alive. Unfortunately, uh, they were such a big hole. It's tough to come back from like that, from that kind of a deficit. So that will drop the Cardinals to four and six, as we mentioned, a 14-8 loss to the hands of the Centennial Cougars. And uh, we will we will see them again coming up the baseball team on Thursday night. Get to go to Castle Field for a night game. I like that night game. Yep. Well, definitely bring your jacket for the night game. Uh, yep, my jammies. I'm gonna bring my jammies. There you go. Yeah. Well, at least we're inside. We're in a press box. At oh, I Castle thought you said indoor baseball. Wow. No, we're in in <laughs> indoors at a pre in a press box at Castle Field. Sounds good. We'll take a look at the rest of our upcoming coverage here on CTN. We got that baseball game live on Thursday, a Joe and Howie gig. And then next week, Monday, May 9th, we've got boys and girls lacrosse. Rogers and the boys, Elk River and the girls at Coon Rapids. And then we'll get Champlin Park back here at Coon Rapids, Thursday, May 12th. All live coverage here on CTN. Watch us on YouTube. And get the rest of your info on CTN Coon Rapids website. Well, it's well, been a pleasure, Jeremy. It always is, Howie. Nice to be out here. A shout out to Joe Young. Big thanks to all the crew, including Dave Amy for the fine camera work on that third oh. baseline. Oh, we man. appreciate you for watching. Thanks, and have a good night.